Hello everyone, David here. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm currently looking for alternatives to Adobe products because I really don't like paying their subscription fee to use their software. In a previous video, I found that I could replace Premiere Pro with DaVinci Resolve pretty easily and mostly painlessly. Plus, the free version of Resolve is great and you get lots of features. Um, today, I want to look at Adobe Lightroom. Now, I've heard that Skylum Luminar 4 has a lot of the same features and a kind of similar look and feel. And it also has an interesting AI system that can automatically improve your photos. So I'll be keen to look at that. So today I went to St. James's Park with my wife and a friend Olya and uh, she has volunteered to help out with a photo shoot so that we have lots of source material uh, to check in Luminar. Um, here's Olya's description of her Instagram channel which you should also check out. It talks about travel when it's possible, about London when it's not possible and generally about life and inspiration. Cool, so check it out, here's, here's the address um, and uh, we are going to take a few pictures and then I'm going to do edits on them like I would in Lightroom, but in Luminar. So let's see how we get on. On with the photo shoot. I just want to say that helicopter is the bane of my life. So this is going to be an interesting shot because we've got a really strong backlight so it's going to be a good test to see if I can uh, fix the exposure in Luminar. I could, I could crank up the EV value on my camera right now but mm, I'd rather have it as a good test later so we'll take the shot with sort of the automatic exposure and then see if we can get um, it fixed in post. Okay, we're all done. Uh, thank you very much, Olya. Thank you. Um, we are going to head back to uh, HQ now and we'll edit some photos and see if we can get some good results. Okay, so I've edited about 20 photos in Luminar 4 um, and it's okay, I do miss Lightroom a bit. Um, Luminar has a few performance issues and a couple of bugs as well that I'm finding I'm battling with. Um, so just in terms of loading the images, I found Luminar is a bit slower and that will be a problem if you have to sort through thousands of images just to pick your um, best photos. Um, also, actually making changes on some of the sliders takes a little bit longer for them to take effect, whereas on Lightroom, at least on my machine, um, it's almost instantaneous. Um, and there were a couple of bugs in the last version of Luminar that I tried. Um, they've just dropped an update, so I'm going to see if that's any better. Um, in fact, let's walk through a kind of typical photo edit, and then I can show you what the program looks like and how some of the AI features work as well. Okay, so this is the gallery view uh, in Luminar. Um, as I said, it can take a little while longer to populate than it would in Lightroom. Um, you can flag your favorite pictures uh, by pressing P, and there's also some various other keyboard shortcuts for removing the flag, and also setting a, a rating from one to five. Um, I've flagged this one as a good potential for editing. Um, Olya is nicely in focus, and it's quite a nice clean composition, and the background is nice and blurry as well. So let me take you through some of the things Luminar can do. Um, a lot of it is just as you would expect, like you get exposure controls. Um, that one is pretty quick to react, fortunately. Um, they have a smart contrast, which um, I think tries to sort of identify what's in the scene a little more than just applying contrast. Um, worth checking exactly what it's doing on their website if you're interested. Um, but I have to say, I do quite like the effect. I do think a little bit more contrast usually gives a picture just that bit of extra bite um, and uh, that's certainly what it's doing here. Some of the sliders do just take a little while to take effect to react to what I'm doing. Yeah, we also have some AI options so I can add an AI accent which I actually quite like. It's just sort of given the background a bit more saturation by the looks of it and the AI sky enhancer which seems to sort of deepen the blue of the sky, um, which is kind of useful because you can just make out that bit of the London eye poking through the background there. Um, but I don't love the effect it's got around here, around the edges of the, uh, the trees. So I'll just keep that on a little bit. 
Um, I think my crop is not perfect, so I have to go to the edit tools here. Um, and I'm just gonna crop in just this left side ever so slightly. Uh, and by default, it's done it with maintaining aspect ratio and I wish it defaulted to free. Um, so I'm just gonna bring that in ever so slightly. So Olya is centered. Yeah, and if you want to go and uh, remove some of your previous edits, you've got everything in a history down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna remove that crop because it wasn't really doing anything. Okay, so uh, moving on with light. Um, also, you have AI structure. I'm not sure why that needs to be AI, really. Um, it seems to be doing pretty much sort of typical sharpening that I would expect. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with Olya's face at all, but um, I do just want to show you um, the healing brush and some of the portrait options as well. So if you go up to this edit tools here, you also have arrays. And again, bit of a bummer, it takes a while to prepare. Um, and even after you've made selections that you want to heal or remove from the photo, you then have to wait for it to prepare again. And also you can't change which other bits of the image it's sort of cloned in on top of the bits you want to replace. So it's a little bit limiting. Okay, so it's prepared. Let's go in. Um, I'm just gonna remove this uh, tiny bump there. And then, is there anything else I want to change? No, so I'll hit done. It's gonna make a new layer just for that removal. And it seems to have done a pretty good job. And then I'm back editing my image. There are some really cool portrait options. So if I know I'm working with a portrait kind of photo, um, there's an interesting AI skin defects removal, um, which does pretty much what it says on the tin. It's like, effectively just kind of blurring everything it identifies as skin. Um, and it also has shine removal, which um, I don't see making a huge amount of difference myself. Um, I could imagine if that does actually remove some horrible glare on a face, um, that could be really useful. I'm not sure if it's really doing anything for me here. And a really useful feature is the face light. So, I mean, Typically when you take a photo, you always want to expose for the face. Um, and if you then uh, forget about that and have to adjust exposure later, or if you have you know different areas of the photo and different exposures and you just need to lighten the face, masking it yourself um, can be a real pain. So just, just changing the face light on a simple slider is like really useful. So I actually love that feature. Um, red eye removal um, does what you expect. Eye whitening really nice eye enhancer this just kind of brightens like the central areas of the eyes like the the colored part um and i really like that actually it just sort of almost gives the effect of a bit of a, a catch light um dark circles removal um yeah not for this photo in large eyes i mean heaven help you if you need to turn that up to max but there you go <laughs> that's an option for you um, improve eyebrows just kind of darkens them a bit, but we don't need to do that here. Lip saturation and lip redness, um, again, does what you expect. It's free makeup in post. Uh, lips darkening and teeth whitening. Wow, yeah, it really does work. Okay, I don't think I really needed to do all of that, but um, it's actually kind of nice just to give it that extra bit of kind of shine uh, in Olya's face. So, that photo is looking a bit nicer. It's a little bit brighter, um, a little bit more colorful. Um, you can just see the before. It was a perfectly fine photo. After, it's now really sort of popping out, a bit like a magazine picture. Um, so, there's one other thing I want to show you, and that is how to do um, gradients. And this is unfortunately something that is definitely harder in Luminar. So if I add a new adjustment layer, and that's another thing you have to manage, you have to manually deal with all of the layers, whereas Lightroom kind of, well, if there are any layers, it hides them all away from you. And then you can add a new gradient mask, and then click and draw just to drag them in. So I have a gradient here, but it's not doing anything yet. So I just need to go and change it to reduce the exposure. And then I've got my 
linear gradient in from the side. And for this photo, I just want to darken the side so that your attention is really drawn towards Olya in the middle. And I'm going to add another gradient. And drag that in from this side. And of course, you could go and like paint the gradient yourself or paint a mask. Um, or go and set a radial gradient as well if you wanted. There is a vignette option as well if you just want to kind of a simple like radial gradient into the center of the image. And uh, another thing I miss from Lightroom is just the ability to always export to a child directory called processed, for example, because um, I always want the processed images near the originals um, just for like ease of archiving. Um, but here you have to explicitly go and tell it where to put the pictures. So. Um, yeah, again, another slight annoyance, and it's something Skylum could potentially patch in in the future. All right, there we go, and that's my image. I have to say, I am happy with the results of that. Okay, so there you go. That's sort of uh, the end of my Luminar experiment. Uh, I'm going to keep using it for a little while longer, just see if I can get through all of the growing pains. Um, like I said, it's really the performance that is the biggest issue for me at the moment, especially if I come back from a photo shoot with a thousand pictures I need to pick my favorite, 100 or 200. I wanna just swipe through them quickly to pick the best ones and check I've really nailed focus. Um, I could do that in a separate process though by just kind of viewing the JPEGs and then saving them to a different folder. Ideally, I'd like to do it all in Luminar, so we'll see how that works out. Um, as an alternative, there is also a program called Capture One, uh, which is a lot like Lightroom, in fact, more like Lightroom than Luminar is. Um, I gave that a, a go using the free trial, and I have to admit, I prefer the results I got from Luminar, even though Capture One seemed to give you a few more options. Um, it did, however, lack some of those AI portrait features. Um, which I found really useful, uh, just the ability to kind of like clean up skin, um, lighten the face, and some of those eye whitening and teeth whitening options um, could really save you time if you do a lot of portraits. Uh, so just for comparison, uh, you've got uh, Luminar 4 currently going for £69. Capture One, um, if you get just one specific camera model, uh, for the software, that's £129, so just under twice the price. And that all compares to the Adobe Photography Plan, which is about £10 a month, just under. And uh, to be honest, the Photography Plan is probably the least egregious of all of Adobe's subscription schemes. So if you feel like you can't uh, separate yourself from Lightroom, that's probably the way to go. Just stick with Lightroom and, and you get Photoshop as well uh, for £10 a month. I guess it's not too bad. Personally though, I hate all of these subscription fees and I'm going to stick with Luminar um, just because I want to own the software that I'm using and not have a monthly fee going out even when I'm not using it. What do you think? Will you give Luminar 4 a try? Uh, feel free to discuss it in the comments section down below. I'll leave you with a couple of the other pictures from the photo shoot. And uh, if you liked this video, leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time. Sorry, we, were we going to do the walk past? Well, uh, not anymore. No. <laughs>